Chef Al and I'm here in Texas with Outdoor Solutions from FieldToTable.com and we're going to break down our primal cuts from this axis deer into subprimal cuts. So we got some primal cuts that we fabricated hanging outside which we could do if it was laying in the field or in the back country. You get these basic same primal cuts. And now we're going to take these and break these down into subprimal cuts and talk about best cooking methods suited for each cut of meat. We are removing all of this connective tissue off the outer side with basically we could do that with our fingers and we want to do that before we age it. This is part of the chain and there's a little bit of silver skin or fascia on there. We just take our knife and cut down through some of that and scrape it off skin it kind of like a fish. So this is usable trim. So that goes into our bucket. This we just make a pile of our fat right here. Obviously somebody went in the field when they field dress this, got a little carried away with the knife there and they were cutting the diaphragm and uh, probably hit this uh, part of the tenderloin. So you want to be really careful when you're out in the field that you don't mutilate this piece of meat. So we just trim it, square it off. Again, usable trim. We want to take a little bit of that, say that bloodshot off of there. And if I was going to freeze this, I'd freeze it just like that. Cleaned up, put the other one right next to it and mark them tenderloins. And then you take them out and do what you want with them. You don't want to cut them up in a bunch of little medallions because then you're stuck with medallions. You could do whatever you want with this nice tender piece of meat. Now we get to this nice piece of meat, the back strap off the back side of the deer, right along the spine. The most tender cut on the animal also, very flavorful. Obviously, if you look at this cut of meat, this is the strip loin right here. This would be the New York strip, which would be back along the spine. Then we would move up to the prime rib. And then as you go up to the neck, what we have is we have two muscles that lay like this. So the further you go up the neck, the bigger this muscle gets, which is chewy. So we need to take this off. Along the backbone also is this big piece of connective tissue that goes all the way along the back, which we'll take out. On the outside, we do have some fat and cap covering that we can take off. Again, we can peel a lot of this off with our hands. We can literally take this piece apart with our, basically our fingers. You just want to be careful when you're tearing it that you don't start tearing the eye of the meat. If you start tearing it, then you want to cut it with your, with your knife. And when you're doing this, you want to be careful that you don't pull your hand into the blade of the knife and give yourself a nice nick. Because when you have a sharp knife, it's easy to, very easy to cut yourself, even if you just hit the blade. So there you can see I'm going to start to get into tearing the meat. And we don't want to tear this right here. So now we've got some of the trim, usable trim. We have this nice big fiber that you could use, you know, for stringing things up, tie your teepee together, different things like that. It's, you can't break that down. You can't cook that down. You can't uh, cut it into smaller pieces. It's not, gonna, it's not gonna chew very good at all. So that's not usable. We'll keep that over on the side. This is all good usable trim. And now again, we have this beautiful loin back here, which were your New York steaks, the rib, and then this goes up to the neck, which is much smaller. And when we cut meat like this, it's ready to go just like that. So I would cut this, cut this, cut this. This we can use for stir fry, little medallions, this, we go, these go in the freezer just like that. So now we have some nice, beautiful pieces. They go right down to the wrapper and they vacuum pack them and mark them loin or, uh, or bas yeah, basically backstrap or loin. So why do we do it like that? 
I prefer to do it like that because when I do this, it cuts down my butcher time literally in half because it goes in the freezer like this. Number one. Number two, when it comes out, if there's any freezer burnt, usually it's on this, which is gonna come off anyway. This fascia is what makes it taste tacky, that's what makes it gamey, and that's what makes it chewy. This has to come off. So if I was using farm-raised venison in the kitchen, all of this tacky membrane has to come off every muscle in a commercial kitchen. So when this comes out of the freezer, when I thaw it out in the refrigerator, I'll probably have a tablespoon of blood. If I cut this up into a bunch of little medallions or chops, when I thaw it out, I'm gonna have as much blood as I have meat because of all the surface area I created. If I cut this into medallions, I'm stuck with medallions. I can't take this, rub it in olive oil and rosemary and Dijon mustard and put it out on the Rectech and smoke it or grill it. Uh, I'm stuck with chops or medallions or whatever it was that I cut up. There's multiple ways to take this fascia and or silver skin off the muscle. When you take it out of the freezer and there's frost in it, it's, the meat's nice and firm and it's easy to take off. One way is to push under, push the meat and just use the knife and just peel this off. And some of that can be used for trim, for grinding. This silver skin we don't want to take off. So well, I like to use the chef knife. I'm a chef. From a chef's perspective, that's the knife I always go to in the kitchen. But one way to take this off is to hold it. I'm gonna hold this blade and just hold the knife down like this and scrape it off. I'm going nice and slow so we can see if we can get this on camera. And just peel it off. So there's the silver skin, and here's that beautiful piece of loin that we can season and cook whole. This is usable, that's, that's not. Another way to do this would be where we would just take this, push the meat, and do the same thing here. Just start it onto that must onto that fat right there. And then we're just gonna turn it down like we would skin a fish. And then hopefully that piece of trim we'll use. Then we have a nice clean piece of loin. That goes into trim. This one, uh, you can peel, another way of doing it is you can peel underneath there with the knife and then peel this way with the knife and go underneath that. And I would only just trim that little piece off there. So what do we do with this? As a professional chef, I can take this and I can cook this whole uh, or I can cut chops or medallions or cutlets. So if I wanted to cut a chop, I can cut all the way through as a chop. So if I wanted to cut a butterfly chop, I cut three quarters of the way through and all the way through and then open it up and butterfly it. So it's a little bigger on the table for a smaller deer. You don't have, you know, for elk, you wouldn't have to butterfly them. So those are chops. If I wanted to make a medallion, I'd cut it about a quarter of an inch thick. So now I got medallions, and if I wanted to, I'm just gonna use this one as a little thicker medallion. If I wanted to cut cutlets, I cut through and just pound it. So we have a cutlet, and then if I wanted to make stir fry or stroganoff, you know, we have nice thin strips for searing really fast, high heat really fast. These are tender cuts. You can make the same cuts out of the top inside round of the hind leg. Make these same exact cuts out of, out of this muscle or out of the flat iron steak off the front shoulder. 
So this, we could take this and put some sage and some uh, prosciutto in there, close it up, saute it, and you got venison south and boca. You can bread this if this was turkey breast or goose breast. You could bread it, make it Parmesan. So just because this is venison, that, that doesn't mean you can cut the breast of a turkey and make beautiful turkey chops the same exact way as this venison. So now we got front leg. This would be the front left leg of the animal. And this is the shoulder blade right here. Up here is the flat iron stake. Basically, we'd take, I'd take both those off, call them the flat iron. This is the shank. The shank is the toughest part, but it's also the most flavorful. So when we talk about cooking the shank of a deer, the same as the shank of an elk or a moose or veal or beef. You go out to eat, you eat oso buco, that's the shanks cut two inches thick with the bone in it. You go out to eat a lamb shanks or pork shanks, you're getting the whole thing right here. So uh, this, we're just gonna bone this out and you could tie these shanks and brown them and braise them and cook them with moisture for a long period of time. So any recipe, if you go to the website from fieldtotable.com, you can find recipes for these braised shanks. And, and the most important thing from a chef's perspective is you cook the legs and thighs of a turkey or a goose with the same recipe, it's all interchangeable. So on the shank, there's basically two pieces of meat here. One goes along this side of the bone, this one goes along this side of the bone. If we take this off, we just take this piece off. And on the deer, it's smaller than if it was on an elk. So I'm not cutting to the bone, I'm just cutting down here to get to the bone. To take this piece of shank off. This has a lot of connective tissue. People think that they have to grind that, but that's usually what clogs up their grinder. So we just tie this piece to this piece Tie it, brown it, and we're good to go with the shank for braised shanks. The next one, the bone basically comes from here and goes right here. So we're just gonna take this and peel it off the bone. And we'll use that for trim. Then on this piece, what we want to do is we want to come behind this little, I call it elbow joint. Fall this down. And then as we come down along that bone, this is the shoulder blade right there. So we're just gonna fall this right along that blade right there. and then peel this off the blade. You'll see where the blade comes right along. Just keep the knife right along the edge of the blade. And this right here is that nice, beautiful piece of meat that we're gonna pull out of this. This piece here is the shoulder clod. We take this piece off, which is the smaller part of the blade. On an elk or a moose, they're much bigger. The muscles, of course, are much, much bigger. And this piece right here is the second one. And then on here, you can take this, come down. Sounds like we got some hunters in the kitchen back there. And this little bit of piece of meat right here, of course we would use this on a, on a 
bigger deer or an elk or a moose that's much, much bigger. Any trim, if you think you left too much on there, you can then peel it off, cut it off. And we use all of that trim for grinding. So this, we can do the same again. Just take this and skin it off of there like a fish. So we get most of that silver skin off of there. And then that goes to our scrap for grinding or for stew meat. So now this one, you can see this in there. You see all the fat and the connective tissue on there. You basically follow that seam and take this apart with your hand. So that fat isn't even usable. And then this one, so remember this was part of the shank. This was part of that front leg and you can see part of the shank there, you know, up by the shoulder blade there. So again, all I'm doing is skinning some of this off of there. This is usable trim. Usable trim. So now we get to this one. This one is the flat iron. And we can follow this. Just gonna cut a little bit of this trim off. So this is our flat iron right here. So we're just gonna follow this seam down and you can follow these seams. Just so I'm holding it up like this so you can see the seam. You can just follow it. See if I can actually take it apart with my hand. So. Once you get down to this point, you'll see where it goes right through there. And we're just gonna cut right through here. We're gonna take this piece off. Can you see that seam right there? We're just gonna fall this off. We'll trim that up. Then this is our small shoulder clod. Now if you go to our webpage, from fieldtotable.com, we have a demonstration where we're using the shoulder clod of an elk and it's literally four times bigger than this. So this would be the front, this would be a roast, this could be stew, braised dish. We trim this up and we can use that for stir fry. We trim this up, we mark these two pieces, take the two pieces from the other leg and those are our flat iron steaks, which are the most tender cut of the front leg. So this would be the back left leg of the deer. This is the outside of the deer. This is the sirloin butt. There's the bone that goes right through here. This is the sirloin tip. We can also reference it as a football because it looks like a football. It's basically the thigh of your leg. This is the bottom round. Of course, the shank. The inside top round, which is the most tender cut of the hind leg, and this, uh, this again is the sirloin butt on the inside, up by the tail. And this again is that football shaped muscle. These are the shanks. So this is the inside of the leg. You can see that this part is pretty abused. Uh, it's one of the most abused muscles on the animal because people cut down to the pelvic and expose all this meat to dirt and hair and air and it gets beat up and gets all separated, that's the most tender cut. So all tender cuts from a chef's perspective get dry cooking methods, which is stir fry, saute, pan fry, deep fry, broil, grill, and roast. High heat, fast, and always served rare with venison. With bear and boar or hogs, wild hogs, you need to cook them to 165 degrees. So how we're gonna do this, we're just gonna peel the shank off. Again, this shank will come off in two pieces and then we'll go right down this seam to the bone and we're gonna pull the bone off of this carcass. So this, you could take this off an elk in the field or an antelope in the field. 
especially if you're warm weather hunting, you wanna get this down and get it chilled as fast as possible. Don't submerge it in ice water. You can put ice on it, but don't soak it in water. We don't wanna soak it in water because if you took a New York strip steak and put it in water, what would happen to it? The water is gonna leach everything out. It's gonna change color. You're not gonna be able to get a good brown on it or a sear or caramelization. And it's gonna leach all the flavor and color out of the meat. So we definitely don't wanna soak it. So we're just gonna cut the hock here now and start along the back and along the front here. This front piece is not a very big piece, especially on a deer. And we're just gonna come down. And once you do this once or twice, you can see where these, this, I call it like the knee joint. It, you have to go all the way down to this knee joint, around that joint right there. So if I hold it up, I have to go all the way around that joint. And I'm not trying to cut through that joint because uh, all I want to do is follow this now right to this bone and I'm not cutting down to the cutting board, I'm just cutting to the bone, and we're gonna peel this off. Once you get down to this part, there's some little, I call them wings and nuts and joints that you have to go around. So uh, you don't worry about leaving too much meat on that, the end of that joint right there because there's a lot of little pieces that you have to cut around. If you think you left too much meat on there, then trim it off. But again, you could do this in the field. So now we can see the inside of this leg and we're gonna take it apart by seaming it. So here is the lower part of the shank. So this is really tough. This is called the heel. So again, as I take these apart, lots of times you can literally pull this apart just with your taking your, you know, using your thumb. So this is the other part of the heel. And if you look in here, you can see this piece. So this is the t inside top round, the heart shaped. This is the football or the knuckle shaped. This is the sirloin butt, which is up along the tail. This is the bottom round and the eye of the round. And this is part of that, that heel again, part of the shank. So we're just gonna cut this out. So that's shank. Shank goes with all the other shanks. This piece, I'm gonna leave this in here for just a second. We're gonna peel this piece off. Following the seams to get, this is our football sirloin tip or the knuckle. And this is the sirloin butt right here. And this piece of meat right there and right there, that's the tri-tip that so many people use to roast. You know, on beef, it's much, much larger. sirloin tip or knuckle. That's this muscle right here, the thigh muscle. We also reference it on the field to table webpage as known as the football. Got a whole column written about that. This one here is the tri-tip. It's like a triangle piece of meat that came off of this, which we can trim up and use that for stew. It's really not a roast. This is the sirloin butt, 
which is up along the tail, nice and tender. You can stir fry it, stew it, put it on kebabs. There's all different kinds of dishes because it's, it's a tender cut, so it gets all dry cooking methods. So now we got three pieces left, and that is the bottom round, the eye of the round, and the top round, or the inside round. This is that heart-shaped piece of meat. So we don't recommend that you go to the butcher and get your hind leg cut into uh, round steaks, because a round steak is made up of this muscle, this muscle, and this muscle. And if you do, they basically cut it up with all of this connective tissue, all of this fascia that makes the meat taste gamey, what makes it contort out of shape, what makes it chewy. This is all on the inside of those round steaks. Plus you got all the fascia on the outside. So this is what makes the meat taste gamey. That tacky membrane, that has to come off. And when you cut a round steak, you can't get that off. So you put it out on the grill and it contorts out of shape like a piece of bologna in a frying pan and it's chewy. Then you come to me and say, what can I do with those round steaks in the freezer? And I tell them you gotta cut them up to make stew meat. So now we got this beautiful piece of meat, inside top round, shaped like a heart. It also has a, what we call a covering on it, which I'll take off in a minute. This is the bottom round and the eye of the round. And you know that you're next to the bottom and the eye when you have a big wad of fat. And there's a gland inside this fat, which we want to take out. So if we were cooking this whole hind leg out on the grill, we would inject it with a brine and or a marinade so that it would alter the flavor because all of this is still stuck inside of there. So we wouldn't just season the outside and put it on the grill. We would season it, uh, marinate it, put a brine in it, and then slow cook it and smoke it. So that would break this connective tissue down, plus it would alter the flavor to get rid of that gamey taste. So to get that out of there, we just take our knife and peel this piece off. And you can see where the seam goes. And just peel the eye of the round out. So the eye of the round looks in the culinary field, it's a mock tenderloin because it looks like a tenderloin. It's chewier than a tenderloin, but it, we call it the mock tender. So this is still tender dry cooking methods. So we wanna take this gland out of here and it's not gonna hurt you if you cook the meat with that in there, like if you cook the whole hind leg. When you get to that and you're carving the hind leg, just cut around that and throw it out. So we'll get rid of that, we'll discard that. And then we're gonna take these pieces and talk about how to break them down, how to cook them. So catch us on fieldtotable.com. Check out our recipes, check out all our videos on how to get the meat from the field to the cutting board and next to the table.